right on the hills of Fries, London, we are in Paris for the inaugural Art Basel Paris Plus. The fair is held at the Grand Palais FMIR, right behind me, near the Eiffel Tower. I can't wait to see what they have inside. Let's go! And here's some background on the show. Art Basel makes its debut in the City of Light this October, taking the usual time slot of a flagship contemporary French art fair called FIAC, which stands for Foire Internationale des Arts Contemporains. That was a mouthful. Some feared that the show would be too corporate, losing its French charm. So there was an agreement between the Grand Palais Management Company and the MCH Group, which owns Art Basel, that one-third of the participating galleries must be based in France. By the way, the largest shareholder of MCH Group is Rupert Murdoch's son, James. Speaking of the French identity, the French side did not want the fair to be branded like the other events, Art Basel Miami Beach or Art Basel Hong Kong, hence the name Paris Plus par Art Basel, or in English Paris Plus by Art Basel. The Swiss brought to the table the expertise of organizing world-class events, top-notch galleries, and the wealthiest collectors from all over the world. Now back to the show. It's not just me who is eager to see the show, but also some bold-faced names I've spotted here. More than 700 galleries applied for only 156 spots. That's the capacity of the temporary venue. Grand Palais Ephemere was set up on Champ de Mars, while the main Grand Palais de Champ de Lisée is under renovation until 2024. As I continue my quest to discover new galleries, here is Zeno X from Belgium. Tell me a little bit about the gallery. Yeah, so the gallery was founded in 1981 by Frank de Maagd and his wife, uh, actually in like a townhouse uh, across the Museum of Fine Arts. Mm -hmm. And then in 2012, we moved from this old townhouse mm -hmm. to a very large industrial building, which was actually a milk factory before, wow. where they would bottle the milk. Um, this place, you know, allows us to have more, you know, exhibitions with large paintings, mm -hmm. you know, or large sculptures, installations. Um, what is also in interesting about the program is that we have quite a few Belgian artists. So we are from Belgium and we have, for example, Luc Tuymans. We also work with Martin Margiela, who used to be, of course, the very famous fashion designer, but he left fashion in 2008. He tells me he was a little bit tired of all the deadlines and ever since he's been developing himself as an artist and now he makes sculptures. And you represent and him, right? We represent him. Uh, we also have uh, another Belgian artist that I would like to present and this is Dirk Braakman. It's, uh, it's a, a very interesting photographer. Some people tend to get a little bit confused because people expect photography to be glossy or to be shiny and this is very matte what we see. Almost it, like a painting. It's right? almost like a painting, yeah. So the, 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 I would say the texture of the work is very interesting. That's like one of the enigmatic things about his work. And he also does things that you would are supposed are not supposed are not supposed to do actually in photography like he plays with the reflections with the lights you know you could also see that some of his portraits are a little bit unsharp so actually the things you are not supposed to do but this you know gives it a very poetic uh, and artistic quality yes and I'm very happy that I finally have a chance to meet Applicat Prasan Gallery, which I've been chasing for a while. Uh, we will be celebrating our 30th anniversary next year, and we are starting this year of celebration with that very uh, exhibition, mm -hmm. uh, solo of uh, historical works by Georges Mathieu, which gives you uh, the ground of what we do at the gallery, which is only dedicated to the second school of Paris, the main artists, who have worked uh, in Paris between 1945 and 1965. Mm -hmm. uh, 
can you please tell me a little bit what brought you into the art world, your, your background? I know that it's illustrious career, but <laughs> I uh, want to hear it from you. No, actually I started, I did a uh, business school and I started uh, working uh, as a corporate uh, manager. Uh -huh. And um, after a while I started at Christ first at Cartier, in Canada, then I worked at Christian Dior, mm -hmm. and um, at some stage, uh, at the time when the French auction market was still a monopoly of the so-called French commissaire priseur, mm -hmm. uh, Christie's had, uh, had, had started the process of establishing itself as an auction house, mm -hmm. and back in 1995, they, um, had, I had been uh, doing an internship at Sotheby's in the past, but then at that time Christie's was willing to hire an executive to um, prepare for the opening of the market mm -hmm. and I was hired by Christie's and then became after that the managing director. And you did like two really significant sales for MoMA, right? Can you? Well that was lay way later so after I've managed uh, Christie's for a while I took over my father's gallery mm -hmm. back in 2004 um, which he had established in 1993 mm -hmm. um, and yes so as we are only specialized in the French post-war mm -hmm. um, years ago a MoMA at um, as you know the American Museum are entitled to deaccession whereas the French ones cannot but at some point they had wanted to sell two of their paintings um, one by uh, uh, Georges Mathieu another one by Dubuffet and we were lucky enough to be uh, entrusted uh, the MoMA to sell on their behalf. And you mentioned that this probably this big painting behind us, it's probably the highlight, right? Yes, it took us um, eight years to pull this show together because we are pure sec secondary market dealers, mm -hmm. so we get one piece after another. We, to give you, you know, some claims at what, why we did that, we would not have done the show if we had not been able to secure a painting such as this one, which is not only very representative of what people think uh, Mathieu is as an artist, but also probably as the highlight of our stand. So how did you manage to acquire it? Is it uh, was it from private collector? Yeah, it's coming from a private collection. And um, funny enough, we sold this painting once in the past, ah. back in 2007, I think. Mm -hmm. And this is what we do. We sell and yeah. then we regret and try to buy back. Well, how is the show going for you? It's been very well so mm -hmm. far. Mm -hmm. uh, the show will uh, be uh, also going on at our two galleries after the, after the Paris Plus uh, venue mm -hmm. uh, but so far so good. We've sold so far five works. Wow, so congratulations. It's a good, it's a good start. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also doing justice to the artist because mm -hmm. I think Mathieu is a fantastic uh, not only painter but creator, uh, one of the most important of you know mm -hmm. that school that we are representing. So mm -hmm. yeah, so far, so very good. And here are some highlights from the free outdoor part of the fair. The sites on Place Vendôme, there is an installation by Polish artist Alicia Quade. And the exhibition La Suite de l'Histoire, the rest of the story, in Jardin de Tuileries showcases large-scale works by multi-generational artists. Niki de saint paul Romeo Nitkinana, Franz West, Steinant, Grazia Verisco, Zuzana Cebatou, Hugo Schiavi, Kim Farkas, Nina Bayer, Judith Hope, Ottobon Kanga, Robert Montgomery, Odile Deck, and Carlos Cruz Diaz. From Paris, I'm Jane Greaves.